Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to dealing with materials data. We are looking at the collection analysis and interpretation of uh, data uh, from the material science and engineering. And uh, we have done two modules. We have done an introduction to R module and this module is meant for doing descriptive data analysis using R. And uh, we have already done analysis on two sets of data. One is on the conductivity of uh, electrolytic tough pitch uh, copper. And uh, uh, we also did an analysis on grain size and we found that the conductivity measurements and the grain size data are of two different types. In the case of conductivity measurement, uh, the repeated measurements just gave uh, uh, errors about some mean value uh, because those are measurement errors or random errors or uncertainties associated with the experiment. But on the other hand, when we measured something like uh, grain size, uh, it has naturally a distribution. Uh, not all grains are of the same size, uh, they follow a distribution and the distribution is not uh, normal or Gaussian or anything like that, it is slightly more complicated. So uh, it makes sense to represent the data in this case not just with a, uh, mean and standard deviation like we did in the case of uh, conductivity, but also by plotting something like a histogram plot uh, to indicate how the data looks like. So let us now continue uh, with the second data set, it is also uh, a data set which uh, deals with uh, distributions and this is the grain size uh, data set 2.csv and uh, this is slightly complicated data set because it contains grain sizes of two phases and we are going to carry out all the rank based and property based uh, analysis uh, for both these phases. And in all the cases we are going to do it um, one next to the other. So we can have information about grain sizes of these two phases, but we will also have a comparison between the grain sizes of phase 1 and phase 2 uh, in terms of their rank based and property based uh, uh, summaries. So that is what we are going to do. One of the things that you have to carry from this session is that if you just looked at the grain size uh, like we reported conductivity just by reporting the uh, mean and standard deviation, you will see that the grain size of grains of phase 1 uh, is 24.1 plus or minus 0.4 and grain size of grains of phase 2 is 23.4 plus or minus 2. Um, sometimes uh, students make a mistake of thinking that these two grain sizes are different and uh, uh, grain size of uh, grains of phase 2 is smaller than uh, 1 that is not true uh, because you also have to take into account the fact that there is an uncertainty. When we say 23.4 plus or minus 2 it means that the number could be anywhere between 21.4 to 25.4 and so the 21.4 uh, to 25.4 actually covers 24 also. When we say 24.1 plus or minus 0.4 that means it is 23.7 to 24.5. So within the error bars uh, all that you can say is that these two phases have the same grain size. However, if you look at the histogram as we will do or look at the quantile information, uh, you will see that the mean and standard deviation uh, are not the complete picture. Uh, these two grain size distributions are very different even though they might end up giving you more or less the same uh, grain size and that is the part that has to come through uh, this session. So that is what uh, we are going to see and we are going to understand. So let us do as usual we want to uh, open R okay. and uh, so we have to check the version, we have to make sure that we are in the right directory and so we are all set to now start importing the data and in this case uh, the data is um, in CSV format, so read.csv and it is from data directory 
and uh, grain size 2 is the um, data set 2. Right. As you can see there are 3664 observations and there are 6 variables, 6 variables because in addition to the 5 variables that you saw in the other case, uh, here the grain, uh, the face identity is also included before grain identity. Of course, you can get more information by looking at the structure of uh, this uh, object X, it is a data frame. There are 300 and, uh, 3664 observations, there are 6 variables, the variables are face identity, integer identifying grain, number of measurement points, area of grain, diameter of grain and the esteem grain size. Like we did earlier, we are going to be worried only about integers uh, identifying the grain and the ASTM grain size, uh, of course for the two phases, right, face identity. Uh, is, uh, the, is this is a two phase microstructure. So, there are two phase identities 1 and 2 and we are going to be working with uh, these two, right. Uh, first thing of course is to plot, uh, we can always try plot x. Uh, so, it is uh, 6 by 6. Uh, so, you should have 36 uh, uh, boxes, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 3, Six. So, 36 boxes are there and so against face identity, against integer identifying grain etcetera all the uh, parameters are plotted and so you can see uh, how the data looks. So, this is the first step and this uh, does not distinguish between uh, uh, the, the grain identities. So, let us uh, do the plotting of okay. what is this command. So, we want to plot the um, grain identity versus grain size and we want to color them according to the face identity. So, face identity 1 should get one color and face identity 2 should get another color, right. So, this is how the plot looks. So, uh, these are the sizes and these are the grain identities. Uh, you can also switch them which is how it was in the original one and you will get this. I am showing this plot because this is closer to what you would see in the case of a dot chart, uh, but it is very difficult here you know to distinguish between these black points and red points. Uh, however, in dot chart they will be separated. So, dot chart is always a nice way of visualizing the data uh, instead of plain uh, uh, scatter plot that you can make. Of course, you can also uh, play with uh, plain scatter plot yourself and uh, come up with commands which will separate uh, these data, but there is an easier way by using the existing libraries, right. So, that is what and here it is much clearer. So, there are lots of red points and fewer black points and the block black points are all clustered here and the red points are spread all over, right. So, black points are between 20 and 24 whereas red points are between 12 and uh, 24 and odd, okay. So, this is an important point, so we will come back to it. So, let us uh, do the other thing, let us separate out the data, okay. So, this tells R that we are going to make two plots, right, and one on top of another, okay. And those two plots we are going to plot by using phase 1, phase 2. So, the grep command, so is going to get all the line numbers or rows which have data of phase 1. And this grep command is going to get the row numbers of all the data points which has data for phase 2, that is what I1 and I2 do. So, if I plot x i1, 6 versus x i 1 2. So, this will be only data that is corresponding to phase 1 because we have separated that those line numbers and i 2 is for those data uh, rows which have data about phase 2. So, that is what this is 
and of course we are going to label them as phase 1 and phase 2 and x label is the ASTM grain size, y label is grain ID. So let us do this plot and you can see that phase 1 has grain sizes ranging somewhere between 20 and 24 and odd and phase 2 has between 12 and 24, okay. So this is about 3, this is about 12 the spread is 4 times as much. Like I said we, later we are going to see that both of them are going to give you a grain size which were somewhere which is somewhere about 24. Both are going to show you the same grain size and of course this is going to show more of spread. It will show a spread of uh, um, 2 as compared to spread of 0.4 here, so 5 times. Uh, however, uh, looking at this data now it is very clear that the phase 1 and phase 2 grain sizes are completely different in terms of their distribution even though the overall gross properties like um, mean might be the same, right. So that is the point behind making this plot. Like I said you do not have to make all these uh, two plots separately, uh, dart chart will do it automatically for us. So we are going to look at that. Uh, but before uh, we do uh, the dart chart, let us do the stem plots. And again we are going to do st two stem plots, first stem plot is for um, uh, identity 1 you can see. So the decimal point is one digit to the left of the pipe symbol, so it is 20.8 and 21.0, 21.2 etc., 21.6. Um, and 22.0, 22.0, 22.0. So, so these are the data points and you can see that it has a tail and then it slowly peaks and the peak is here. There are 275 uh, data with this 24.2 number and that is why the average falls somewhere about 24.2 because the rest of the numbers are small. Uh, compared to uh, this value and the, 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 the data goes like this and then it just peaks, right. So it has a long tail on one side uh, but there is nothing on this side, there is no tail at all. I mean this is the peak and from the peak on one side you see that the data um, has a tail, okay. So we can now do this for 2 a stem plot course it is much more skewed. So you see these data points 11, 12, 13 etc. And then you see that there are 52 more data points, 616 more data points, 1924 more data points. So this is also the peak and from there it just goes this way. So stem and leaf plots are nice to know about the structure of the data, how it looks like, uh, which will become apparent when we do the histogram plot, uh, which we are going to do, okay. So before that we are going to do the dot chart. Let us do the dot chart. Uh, so we had x, um, notice that Okay, so let us do the uh, sorry, dot chart. Notice that because we previously said that you have to do these uh, two plots, right, uh, two rows of plots, uh, it continues. If you want to change it, you have to give again give the command to make sure that it starts uh, plotting single. But in this case, we want to see the two plots uh, for phase 1 and phase 2, so let us continue. Um, so this is the second dot chart. So you can see that uh, this is the same as the two plots we made previously and so dot chart uh, again gives you this uh, information, okay. Let us make a single dot chart, okay. So how do we do? We say okay, and then we do a dot chart 
of x and then we color right we color by factor x1 right so we are going to say dot chart of the uh, six column which is the sizes and color by factor of uh, 1 which means uh, phase 1 and phase 2 should be plotted with different colors right and here is a plot now you can see that dot chart automatically separates out the black points from red points. Previously just our scatter plot actually overlapped them, but dot chart automatically separate them out and, and puts them. Okay? So, you do not have to make two different plots just by calling dot chart uh, with factor now you can look at how the data looks like. Okay? So, which is very good, uh, which is a nice way of looking at uh, data. Uh, let us now move to uh, the rank based properties. Okay. So, we will do the cumulative distribution uh, function of course. Uh, so, you can say ECDF uh, plot dot ECDF of x uh, 6. Okay, so, this is the cumulative distribution function and, and you can see it just goes like that uh, because we know that there is a peak somewhere here and it has a tail right? and this is true for 2 also. Right? It is also, but it is a much longer and fatter tail as compared to the other one. right? So, if you actually do this uh, um, uh, two rows then you will immediately see uh, because see both of them go from 0 to 1 and in this case uh, you have so both are skewed both have long tails and the tail is only on one side that is what I mean by skew uh, but, uh, but the tail is uh, much longer here and because they are on the same scale you can also see that this tail is much fatter than this. right? So, so, this information about the skewedness and uh, how much information is there in the tail both peak at this value somewhere around this value is where they peak. Okay? Uh, but, uh, but their tails have different uh, distributions, you know, di different characteristics. Okay? So, so let us go back to uh, single plot. Um, Okay, so, so, we have looked at the empirical cumulative distribution function and uh, we will do um, okay, so, can we do that using ggplot? Okay, Let us do that also. So, we use the library ggplot and library scales. The reason why we are doing this is because we want to see whether uh, the data will show any normal behavior. Obviously, it is not going to show because it is speaking at one end and it is highly skewed. Normal distribution should have nice uh, symmetric tails on either side, uh, which is not the case. So, we are obviously not expecting. But if you see some kind of this kind of skew, uh, what kind of uh, plots do you get right uh, for the probability scale okay so let's take a look at it let's uh, okay so i have plotted uh, both this on the same plot so usual gg plot you have to say data is uh, x1 and uh, you plot the grain size and that is uh, ecdf and then you have to plot the second data uh, again aesthetics is extreme grain size and you have to plot plot the empirical cumulative distribution function so that's what we have done and they are on the same plot okay and then what do we do? Obviously, we are going to change the um, scale. We are going to change the scale. Uh, these are not needed. We already have this information. 
uh, we also have this information so this is also not needed. Okay, so, we are going to make two plots and what are those plots going to be? We are going to do the probability distribution, right? Uh, the, the scale we are going to change it to probability scale, normal probability scale. Obviously, we do not expect it to be normal, so we do not expect this uh, curves to turn out to be a straight line we are just confirming right and so you can see uh, it is not clear here that these two figures are one on top of uh, each other but you will see it here. So in both the cases so this is also not a straight line uh, sort of some amount of deviation uh, and here it is very clearly seen that it is not a straight line at all. Okay. And you can see that this does not go up to uh, it, it is only 0.4 here and it is only 0.25 here. The so, so scale is not going up to 1 as you would have seen in other cases. That is because the data is not uh, symmetric about the mean, it is only one side that you have the tail. So, that is what is seen in this also. So, we will come back and we will do more of the other analysis histograms and the box plots etc. Um, for the same data set. Thank you.